What's up everyone, my name's Robbie, this is Robbie and Neil, and today we are talking about the best small cap dividend ETF. So this is a chart that can help us figure out why someone would invest in an ETF that invests only in small caps instead of only in large caps, for example. So that's what we're starting off with today to figure out why you would even do this. So for example, if you look here, this is the Wilshire family of funds, and if you take a look at this black line, this black line is actually the large cap stock. So think of the, the uh, S&P 500. Those are the largest companies in the stock market. So if you had just invested in those over a 10 year period, during this time period, you would have had a 266% rate of return. Now, if you had instead of invested in, in the larger companies, you invested in the smaller companies in the stock market, you would have had a lower return. You have had a return of 193.15% which is this red line down here. You can see that right here. So what you can see is that over this time period, 10 years, you would have had a lower return if you invested in smaller companies instead of larger companies. However, what if we look back? Watch what happens when I actually move this uh, time period back a bit. So let's go back until the time period of June 2nd of 2007 to June 1st of 2007. I'm just picking a random 10 year period that is gonna show you that over that period of time, you actually had a better chance investing in small cap stocks than large cap stocks. So here you can see the small cap stops, the red line, 109% return. If you take a look at the Wilshire large caps, 96.91. So you did a better job in small caps and large caps. This is the whole idea of all of this. Sometimes different stock sizes, company sizes outperform others. Sometimes dividend investing outperforms growth investing. That's what we're talking about today. Okay, so here we go. We have five different ETFs. We're gonna figure out which of these is the best. These are all dividend paying, small cap oriented ETFs. So uh, of these five, I basically, I said when I was looking towards the different ETFs that I could possibly put in this video, I said, I want 2% distribution yield. So I want you to be able to have yield or you could call it dividend yield or distribution yield of at least 2% in these ETFs. Now, so these all have at least 2% as a yield. So first off, we have the Invesco S&P Mid-Cap 400 Pure Value ETF, RFV. It says mid-cap here, but we'll talk about that in a second. We have the, S the Spider SSGA US Small Cap Low Volatility Index ETF. This is SMLV. We have the Vanguard Russell 2000 Value Index Fund ETF. This is uh, VTW, uh, VTWV. And then we have iShares Russell 2000 Value IWN. Then we have iShares Morningstar Small Cap Value ETF, ISCV. So these are the ones we're going over today. Let's start with the expense ratio. So we wanna see if some of these expense ratios are low or high, and if they're higher, are they worth having a higher expense ratio? So first off, we have RFV expense ratio, 0.35%, not a very high expense ratio. However, comparatively, it is. So if we go here, 0.12 for SMLV. So why would RFV be more than SMLV? You know, you have to decide if this is gonna be worth paying you know, three times as much money for an expense. So VTWV, we have 0.15%. IWN, we have 0.24%. And ISCV, we have 0.06%. So the cheapest of these is this Morningstar Small Cap Value ETF from iShares. And then the most expensive is RFV. We're talking dividends distributions today, so let's go straight off onto this part where we're gonna talk about the distribution yields of these ETFs. We have RFV, 2.29% distribution yield, so pretty decent yield. SMLV, 2.41%. We have VTWV, 2.08%. We have IWN, 2.04%. ISCV, 2.26%. So the uh, best of these different ETFs with a distribution yield of 2.41% is SMLV. Let's talk about everyone's favorite part now, the returns of these different ETFs. I have all five of these ETFs inside this chart. I also included uh, SPY, so the S&P 500, so we can see how a large cap fund, the S&P 500 index, compared to these. And so let's take a look at first off, by first off going through the time period, we're going back until about uh, February, or uh, February of 2013 here. So this is the time span, February 2013 until today. Now let's start off by saying that because SPY or the S&P 500 has outperformed small cap dividend ETFs or generally all small, small cap ETFs, uh, this is gonna be a higher return, so 221% for SPY versus the next closest SMLV, which is 154% gain. So 
154% gain uh, might be good for you. Seems decent, but of course, when you compare it to the S&P 500, not as good. So, and you have to, again, decide, do you think that small caps are gonna be a good place to have money right now? Will the next 10 years be better for small caps and large caps? That's up to you to decide. I'm not gonna decide that in this video. So let's see what happens as we go through time. So we're gonna say, up to today, what has been the best gainer essentially up to today? So I'm gonna move this and you're gonna see. Now watch SMLV and watch RFV. So we're going forward in time now and we're saying, okay, over, let's say from 2014, 2015, how have the returns been? So we're seeing that RFV is now on top, SMLV is under it. We keep going. SMLV, RFV, pretty close, right? They're pretty close. RFV does pull away a little bit here, and you're gonna see RFV does a little bit better over time. And as we kind of fast forward here, we have RFV still up at the top here. Now we're looking back at the uh, 2019 period, or back pretty much 2020, start 2020 period, RFV on the top here. And then you have uh, SMLV coming up, getting closer, and then here we have SMLV now on the top. So. What am I saying? If I'm looking at this and I'm kind of just like trying to compare the differences between these ETFs over time, what I'm saying is, okay, SMLV and RFE are the two top ones for returns, at least historically. Okay, let's talk about some comparisons in the portfolio real quick. I do want to show you how many holdings are in each of these. So 103 holdings for RFE, 430 for SMLV. We have VTWV with a ton of stocks, 1,405 stocks. Uh, IWM 1,412 and then ISCB 1,241. So we kind of like look at this, we say, okay, these broader market small cap ETFs, they're gonna have, well, as you can see, the returns weren't quite as good as the ones that were a little bit more concentrated. Now that can work against you because these ETFs could not pick as good of ETF or stocks inside the ETFs, that's possible, but it's also possible that they do a good job and outperform which as you can see, they have outperformed other small cap ETFs, the, those being RFV and uh, SMLV. Next, we have the top 10 holdings. If you wanna take a look at these, pause the video here. I'm not gonna go through all of this. These are just the top 10s of each of the ETFs. So you can see all the different top holdings of the ETFs. Let's move on here. Let's go to uh, sector weightings. We're gonna see, I just like to see which sectors are kind of predominant in some of them. So let's go with the first one, RFV, 30% in financial. So lots of financial stocks, SMLV, 31% uh, in financial stocks, VTWV, 28% financial stocks, IWM, 28% financial stocks, ISCB, 26% financial stocks. So if you're into financial stocks, if you have a good um, view of financial stocks going forward, this could be decent. It could be decent. Now, if you actually think financials are overvalued right now, or you don't think they're going to have a good time period over the next five years, this could be a bad place to have money. So it's up to you what you think. If you have an opinion on that, if you don't, Maybe it doesn't matter, right? So I'm just saying they're heavy into financials, these ETFs. Now let's go down a little further and we're gonna see what the makeup of these ETFs is. So in terms of how big the companies are, which is we want to look at small cap ETFs today. So are these small cap ETFs? These are, this is the question, right? So RFV is, does have 31% of its portfolio in medium sized companies. So if you're gonna look for a pure small cap ETF, this is a little bit more of a blend, a little bit of a mid cap, small cap blend, you might say, at least according to Charles Schwab. So mostly, of course, the majority is in small cap, which is how I kind of decipher what the answer is here. So I want the majority in the uh, market cap that I want being a small cap for this video. So 53% now in SMLV is in small, and then micro, which is even smaller than the small caps, is actually 44. So now you got small and micro making up the majority of them in SMLV. So uh, again, you're getting in SMLV, you're getting a little bit more of a small micro and no medium cap uh, companies. And pretty much the same with all of them, a little bit more in mid cap for ISCB. Um, and so there you go. I think it's time for us to figure out which of these is the best ETF and I'm gonna give you my answer. Okay, so drum roll, my favorite ETF in this category, small cap did an ETF is SMLV, the Spider SSGA Small Cap Low Volatility Index ETF. Now, why do I like this ETF? Okay, it's got a 0.12% expense ratio. So it's a lower expense ratio than RFV, which is a 0.35% expense ratio. 
and RFV and SMLV were pretty close together in how good they were in terms of return. And then at the same time, these other ones, they're more broad portfolios. So I do like the SMLV, a little bit more concentrated, around 400 something stocks in it, um, more than RFV, which has only about 100 something stocks in it, right? So these other ones, uh, VTW, VIW, and ISCV have like thousand in the thousand, right? Over a thousand stocks in each. So much broader portfolios, okay? So the, that's my answer. SMLV is my number one small cap dividend ETF, and it pays a dividend distribution yield of 2.41%. It is the highest distribution yield of all of the different ETFs. So it does get that too. So if you're really looking into uh, yield, if you want yield and you want small cap, this is a decent ETF. Okay, let's take a look at the technicals of SMLV. So remember, SMLV, small cap value. It's kind of an easy one to remember, SMLV, small cap value. So that's a good way to uh, always have this ETF come to your mind if you forget what this video is about, SMLV. So uh, let's look at the pre-pandemic highs. So pre-pandemic highs over here, right before the pandemic hit, uh, we had you know around the 95, around 95 was the price. Now, we're still uh, trading above the pre-pandemic highs, so it has not fallen down to those highs yet. And uh, over here, we could see that it hit a high of around 120 per share, a little bit of a double top, one, two, boom. And then we had a decline, of course, like pretty much everything at this time period, which was around January of 2022. Let's zoom in here. Let's throw a little channel on here, which you can see now. And this is very interesting. So we have multiple touches on the top of this downtrend channel. One. And then two right here, of course, we had started off three. So one, two, three, we have a break above the channel and then a, let's say a rejection back down into the channel right here. So we're under the channel line and it's back inside this downtrend channel. On the bottom, we have one, two touches. It did uh, fall down through, break down through the downtrend uh, channel line on the parallel downtrend channel line, but it did uh, reject the bottom, come back up. So there was re resistance, so there was support down here, resistance up here. What is going on? Well, I do see RSI was pretty high and look how far down this thing fell once it got rejected up here. So I would say I don't love the looks of this in the short term. I would say potentially oversold, falling down further, maybe down into the middle of the channel. And what would happen if that happens? Let's take a look. What is the rate of return if you, or the, not the rate of return, what is the return if you buy here and it falls down to the middle of the channel? That's negative 5.81%. We can see this little gap right here if it fell down to that point, negative 5.81%. So maybe if it does fall further and you do want to invest in the CTF, you want time your entry point potentially. Could go down a bit here. Maybe we'll get a bill a little bit cheaper. Uh, or if you're like many long-term investors who are probably watching this video, you don't care about timing the entry point, you just want to invest in the CTF. So go ahead, dollar cost average into it if you like it. And that is that. So thanks so much for watching. Hope you liked the video. Please hit that like button, subscribe to see more videos like this. And I got another video coming up on the end screen that was a loud uh, horn outside <laughs> right now. Thanks everyone so much for watching. I do want to remind you, I'm not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. This is just my opinion. And let's face it, I am not right 100% of the time. So please do your own due diligence.